We will have another crisis without breaking up the bank. Our economy remains at risk of another crisis, and the only way to change that is to reform the very structure of the banking industry that caused the financial crisis. How do I know? I used to work on Wall Street. Throughout my career on Wall Street and in the city of London, I worked at many of the biggest banks in the world. Two remained alive and two failed during the financial crisis that began in 2008. I say began because I don't believe the crisis is over. The truth is, until the very structure of the banking industry that caused it is reformed, our economy remains at risk. Over the past few weeks, many Americans have felt anxiety about their finances and their future. I understand their worry and their frustration. I worked in banking during the time of Glass-Steagall's final repeal in 1999. The Glass-Steagall law is no longer appropriate to the economy in which we live. I saw firsthand the immediate aftermath as investment banks clamored to remove constraints on the amount they could gamble and the complicated investments they engineered so that they could compete with the commercial banks with their big balance sheets that were encroaching on their complex investments space. I believe this legislation in its current form will do more harm than good. After I left my post as a managing director at Goldman Sachs in 2002, I exposed how credit derivatives and complex financial organisms called CDOs or collateralized debt obligations combined with the aftermath of Glass-Steagall repeal would cause a financial crisis. Say that again. Collateralized debt obligation. It's important to understand because it's what allowed a housing crisis to become a nationwide economic disaster. Sadly, I was right. After that, I exposed all the ways in which Congress, the Treasury Department, and the Federal Reserve subsidized the banks that perpetrated crimes against their customers and the overall economy. Right now, every bank in town is unloading these bonds onto unsuspecting customers, and they won't devalue them until they get them off their books. This level of criminality is unprecedented, even on... Wall Street. This was after Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers went bankrupt due to leveraging their subprime related assets with money borrowed from banks like JP Morgan Chase that had the capacity to lend against, create, and sell those very same assets. These banks knew what they were doing. They were engaged in illegal behavior driven by greed. Greed, for lack of a better word, is good. Their greed crashed the economy. They are still doing this now. I repeat, Wall Street is taking the same type of risk that caused the crisis in the first place. Greed is not good. The big six banks survived the financial crisis. They're still subsidized by $4. trillion worth of money that has been electronically generated by the Fed. And now, these banks are collectively bigger than before. They've not been broken out. Your personal checking and savings accounts remained mixed with their convoluted derivative transactions at major Wall Street institutions. We still have no separation between commercial and investment bank companies as there was after the crash of 1929 brought us the glass Act of 1933. The banks received subsidies and money at low rates from the Federal Reserve. This is another way of saying that the big banks were rewarded for their crimes with easy money and no accountability. And what do I say when they ask me why it wasn't regulated? No one wanted to. We were making too much money. Into the last crisis period, big banks issued or bought subprime mortgages and re-engineered them into complex assets that were faulty and fraudulent. What they did led to a crisis. They took the economy to the brink. They paid over $160 billion in fines as settlements for a myriad of crimes. Who broke the law? I just want to know who you think broke the law. My old boss and former president at Goldman Sachs, Gary Cohn, who also served as President Trump's chief economic advisor, seems to believe that no major Wall Street executives broke the law during the 2008 financial crisis, as he noted on the 10th anniversary of the crisis. What laws were broken? That's the same Goldman Sachs that since 2009 has been hit with $8 billion of fines for mortgage fraud and other violations. But Gary had it partly right. None of the major Wall Street CEOs were indicted, let alone jailed. Their firms paid fines as a cost of doing business, a simple tax write-off. Without undergoing real reform, they would eventually thrive as they bought back their own stock. Compensation among the top Wall Street executives has soared. The American people did not share in a real recovery, let alone the upside they got. Into the last crisis, it was subprime mortgages that were baked into the cake of toxic assets. Today, 
it's corporate bonds and loans. The amount of debt that's been issued by non-financial companies as a share of U.S. GDP is near levels last seen in World War II. It's all just the same thing over and over. We can't help ourselves. Bank-engineered collateralized loan obligations, or CLOs, have shattered new records of issuance. This year alone, 84 billion of them have been sold. That, I'm afraid to say, is the beginning to a recipe for disaster. And when that disaster hits again, the too big to fail banks will point to the deposit side of their balance sheet as reason to save them. They will hold people's everyday accounts as hostage in return for bailouts and subsidies. The big banks are doing fine. Let's protect the consumers. When it comes time to reckon with their own inevitable failures, the American people will be left to cover the tab again. There is no more time to waste. Even small debt defaults can unleash catastrophic results. More debt and complexity in the financial system means more risk. People's savings, jobs, and the economy cannot be put at peril again. Too big to fail must be stopped. By reinstating Glass-Steagall and by passing Senator Sanders' new bill to break up these behemoth financial institutions, we can do that, and we must. If Wall Street does not end its greed, we will end it for them.